Thank you. This is such a great honor. I want to thank the Board of Multiplying Good and the Jefferson Award Selection Committee for recognizing my work helping children that have suffered the trauma of abuse and neglect. It's an honor to be in the company of Kristen Bell and Amy Smith from Tom's, even if it is virtually, but I was really looking forward to meeting Kristen. Today, Youth Villages has more than 3,000 employees and hundreds of foster parents, mentors, volunteers, and donors who make what we do possible. I want to thank each of them tonight for exemplifying the principles of the Jefferson Award, for using their service to improve lives as well as inspiring others. They truly are the best of America, those who have chosen to serve children with courage and commitment during a truly extraordinary national crisis. I accept this award on behalf of all of them. Tonight, through no fault of their own, almost a half a million children are finishing their dinners and their homework and going to bed in the foster care system. 120,000 of them are available for adoption in need of what you and I all often take for granted, a loving, supportive, forever family, a place to call home. More than 20,000 children will age out of the foster care system without a family and odds stacked against them that seem insurmountable. Left to fend for themselves, they are more likely to experience homelessness and have trouble finding and keeping a job that pays a living wage. They are much more likely to have trouble with the law and less likely to complete their education. These systems we've all created to care for children have so many problems. And while some social issues seem impossible to solve, this one is not. I've dedicated my life to creating solutions so that every one of these young people will have hope and just as much opportunity to live their dreams as all of us. I'm going to talk with you about some of this tonight. We need to dramatically reduce the number of children in our child welfare systems, and we know how to do that. We understand there are some youth who need to be in foster care for their safety, but many do not. No matter how chaotic, a family always does a better job of raising a child than the state. We believe that about half of the children in foster care today could go home if effective, intensive help was provided to their families, and this is how we came to that conclusion. In 1980, 40 years ago, I was appointed director of a small residential campus in Memphis with just 25 children. At the time, the conventional wisdom in child welfare was that families were the problem, and the best way to help a child was to remove them from their home. It was better to take a child away from their parents and put them in more of a middle-class foster home or in a residential center. After a few years, we decided to track the children who left our program to see how they were doing one year after leaving. We were surprised at what we found. After a year, half of them returned to foster care or dropped out of school. Some were pregnant and had run away from home. Even one had committed suicide. Something was just not right. We strengthened our residual program. We added more counselors, a recreational therapy program, an on-campus school, but none of that mattered. Our children were still failing after going home. Our kids couldn't sustain the positive changes in their behavior because nothing had changed at home or at school or with their peer group. It became clear we couldn't successfully help a child without also helping their family. After years of research and experimenting with community-based models, we dedicated our time and attention to create an in-home program of our own called Intercept. We reduced caseloads and sent well-trained specialists into the home three times each week so, so that they could intensively work with parents and their children. And our staff were on call 24-7 with support always available to help the family. As it turns out, parents weren't the problem. They were the solution. We have served almost 70,000 youth in our intensive at home program since 1994. And one year after discharge, 87% are now living at home successfully. 
For more than 25 years, we have pleaded with government officials to fund the most effective services for children. Let us do what works. I'd like to share a story. After four-year-old Cash's mother died, he was put in foster care. His father hadn't been too involved in his son's life and seemed in no shape to help. Dad was homeless, unemployed. In years past, case managers might not even have given the single dad a chance to gain custody of his son. But things are slowly changing. More people now believe in one of Youth Village's core values. Children are raised best by their families. We know that foster care is important and necessary at times, providing a temporary refuge for kids like Cash. But a study revealed that as many as one in four foster children have PTSD, twice that of those with military service. Cash's dad wanted to step up. Like you and me, most parents want to do their best for their children. They may not have the resources or the skills they need, or they may have physical or mental health issues of their own but those can be overcome. It's much better to give parents the support they need up front to prevent the need for foster care rather than trying to repair the deep trauma done by separating them from their family. Cash's dad worked with one of our family intervention specialists for four months. He learned parenting skills and how to best handle his son's ADHD, anxiety, and learning def deficits. He got a job with a good wage and kept it. He showed that he could take good care of his son. Cash left foster care to live with his dad more than a year ago and is doing well today. Cash will sleep in his own home tonight with his own family and not just be another child languishing in a system that was never meant to be a permanent place to grow up. As we reduce the number of children in foster care, we can focus more on those who need an out-of-home placement, those who need emotional and behavioral support, and those children who need to find a new home through adoption. We hope that one day, no young person will reach adulthood in foster care without returning to their family or being adopted. More than 20,000 young people annually will turn 18 without a family, without the resources and skills to thrive each of them is counting on us to not count them out. This is a solvable problem. We can do this. These young people are resilient and capable, but it's hard to make it on your own as a young adult without the support of a family, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. We know this from our own lives and our own family struggles. In 1999, the inspiration and donations of Clarence Day and the Day Foundation we began developing a program modeled to effectively change the lives of these young adults. There was no funding from the government for the intensive help we knew these young people needed. With Mr. Day's support, we began to leverage public dollars through public and private partnerships. And our LifeSet program was evaluated in the largest randomized clinical trial for youth aging out. This type of rigorous evaluation is the gold standard in social services. The results were exceptional. And today, our life set model has been implemented in 18 states in the district, serving almost 5,000 young adults each year. Most importantly, the support from the Day at Ed McConnell Clark Foundations, Stephen Tyler's Janie's Fund, along with Blue Meridian Partners and other generous donors, has helped us transform the lives of over 20,000 youth in life set. Our program helped change a young man's life named Fred one of 10 children born to a struggling family in Mississippi. He and his siblings went to foster care and he participated in several of our programs. After I met Fred, we started an additional enhancement providing extra support for life set participants who wanted to go to college. Only about 3% of young people who experience foster care <clears throat> ever earn a four-year college degree. Fred was the first in his family to graduate from college and with a degree in computer engineering. Fred worked for two Fortune 500 companies after graduating before becoming an entrepreneur and has developed a computer business of his own now. He is now a member of our National Board of Directors. Most people don't know a foster child or a family caught up in this level of despair. 
They don't understand how these well-intended systems often work against the very people they were created to help. But there is good news. We believe at Youth Village that our country is on the cusp of real transformative change in children's systems that has been years in the making. We know what's possible and there's no turning back. On behalf of Youth Villages, we appreciate that the Jefferson Award is shining a light on these important issues and solutions. Thank you again for this honor and this opportunity to share our story.